My name is Fabio Guarracino uh, from the University Hospital of Pisa. In the next minutes, I'm going to address the assessment of shock in the ICU integrating heart and circulation. Uh, I have some conflict of interest to disclose, but I, I honestly don't think they will impact on my presentation. Now, um, Jean-Louis Vincent and Daniel De Bakker uh, very nicely um, summarized that shock is the clinical expression of circulatory failure that results in adequate cellular oxygen utilization. And they also reminded us that shock is very common in the critical care. Uh, about one third of patients in the intensive care unit suffer from a shock state. So it is something very important in our uh, clinical scenario. And we know from the clinical experience that we have different types of shock. And it is not always that easy to uh, understand what is the shock our patient is experiencing. Uh, it is important to us as intensivists to consider that around 60% of shock states are distributive uh, septic shock. And then we have around 16% each hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock, whereas 4% of cases are non-septic distributive shock and 2%, a very minority of cases, show a, an obstructive uh, shock. Uh, when a patient experiences a, a shock state, what we see from our monitoring tools is, is, is that the patients are hypotensive, the cardiac output is low, the systemic vascular resistances can be high in patients who show a very intense vasoconstriction, or it can, they can be very low, for example, in very uh, severe states of vasodilation in the context of the distributive shock. Heart rate is usually high. And if we look at the metabolic consequences of this hemodynamic situation, we see that there is a reduction in the urine output. The venous saturation usually goes down. The lactic production increases and the natriuretic peptide release uh, increases. And from a, a pure hemodynamic perspective, we use several hemodynamic monitoring tools basically to measure the stroke volume and in some cases to have dynamic indices of fluid responsiveness. And we use different types of algorithm to obtain the cardiac output measurement. But today I would like to draw your attention to the interaction between the heart and the circulation, the importance to uh, consider this when um, assessing our patients and managing them in the intensive care. To do so, I need to bring you back to the very basic physiology, so the PV loop, which everybody was taught at school. And we all know that on this diagram, we can draw a, a line. Here you can see that as a, a red dotted line representing the uh, cardiac contractility, the so-called uh, ventricular elastins. By drawing this line on this diagram, we can um, clearly distinguish two areas in the so-called PV loop area. A blue one, which is inside the cardiac cycle, which represents the stroke work, and another area more triangularly shaped so-called potential energy area. And the sum of those two areas, the potential energy and the stroke work, represent the total PV area, as we called it in, in, in physiology. Now, what is very important is that the PV area is something strongly related, as I will summarize for you very briefly, uh, to the myocardial oxygen consumption. And we know that the oxygen uh, within the cardiovascular system is used for basal metabolism, and this is mainly related to the potential energy, as you can see on the right side of the screen. Uh, there is energy used for calcium cycling, and a large part of the oxygen is uh, used for mechanical work, to produce the mechanical work. Now, what is very important for us to consider is that the, the PV area 
has a strong and linear correlation with the myocardial oxygen consumption per bit. So this is really very important to consider. And I think that it is also very interesting to underline that um, under normal circumstances, the efficiency of the cardiovascular system in terms of energetics and oxygen utilization is quite low. As you can see, only 20, 25% of oxygen is used to produce external work. And this is under normal condition. I would say that most of the oxygen used to, to produce energy for the calcium cycling, for the basal metabolism, and ends up into heat production. So it is very important to consider that when we increase the, the, the pressure volume area, we affect a lot the myocardial oxygen consumption. For example, if we increase the contractility, we will increase the PV area and we will linearly and immediately increase the myocardial oxygen consumption. But this can occur also by applying different treatments. For example, if we give a volume, a volume load to a shock patient, the volume load will immediately change the oxygen consumption and will also affect the efficiency of the system. So not only the the drugs that we use, but also the, the volume we usually administer to our patients may have an effect on both the efficiency and the oxygen consumption in the myocardium. But if we go back to the PV loop for a second, we can then draw a second line on this scheme, which here appears as a, a green dotted line. This line represents the arterial elastance which is the ratio of the end systolic pressure to the stroke volume. Now, the end systolic pressure to stroke volume relation is something that we should always consider when treating and managing a shock patient, because if you think about this relation, you will immediately understand that it includes physiological components of the pump physiology, the stroke volume is here, but also physiological components of the vasculature. Because in the end systolic pressure, we can consider the afterload, the resistances, the aortic impedance, and so on. So it's really very important to keep in mind that arterial elastance plays a major role in the cardiovascular physiology. Now, I will try to convince you that the, considering the interaction between the pump and the circulator is really very important. I will do this by showing you two brief uh, movies. On the left side, you see what happens when a pulsatile pump produces a flow. A pulsatile pump, like the human heart, usually produces an intermittent flow. But if you look on, on the right side of the screen to the, the second movie, you see what happens if we introduce along the circuit part of it with different elastic properties. In the presence of an intermittent pump, this different circuit with different elastic properties is able to change the flow from intermittent to constant. So the interaction between the pump and intermittent pump and the circuit plays a major, a pivotal role in influencing the flow in terms of quality and physiology. That's why it's very important in a shock patient to consider also the interaction between the heart and the circulation. And this is called ventricular arterial coupling, which basically describes the dynamic adaptation of the systolic function of the ventricle to the afterload. Now, under optimal efficiency, under normal conditions, the ventricular arterial coupling, which is expressed by the ratio of arterial elastance to ventricular elastance, is around one, because the two elastances under normal circumstances are equal each other. When we have a failing condition, a shock state, for example, an acute heart failure, this ratio tends to increase, which can be due to an acute reduction in contractility, or maybe a sudden increase in arterial elastance, or both in some cases. Now, when the ventricular arterial coupling is normal, 
This means that the pressure volume loop is such that the myocardial oxygen consumption is optimized in that situation. So this is really very important because the ratio of the external work to the entire PDA area expresses the efficiency of the system. And this means that the efficiency strongly depends on the basal inotropic state, so the pump function, and the afterlife. So think about also the CP and the circulation. So we as intensivists, when having a, a, a shot patient in our hands, should always consider that, that any treatment affecting the arterial elastance, like change, drugs changing the, the total resistances or volume changes, or drugs affecting the contractility will immediately change the slope of the elastances and then only change the ventricular arterial coupling, the PD area, and then the efficiency of the system by changing the myocardial oxygen consumption. Look at these two interesting schemes. On the left side, you see a normal condition. On the right side, you see what can happen if you acutely increase, for example, the arterial elastance leading to an increase in the so-called wasted energy. So the energy which is not useful for uh, work production. And ultimately, you will immediately understand that this leads to a reduction in the stroke volume, as you can see here. Now, the interesting thing is that the elastances of the ventricular arterial capping are now easily measurable at the bedside in, bedside in a completely non-invasive way. It is possible to do so with single bit methods. And it is so interesting to see that even the European Society of Cardiology recently published a position paper showing that medical treatment can affect ventricular coupling in chronic and in acute heart failure situation. So there is a strong rationale for considering the assessment of this interaction between the, the heart and the circulation because this offers a, a, an adjunctive perspective and understanding on the pathophysiology and can help in guiding, help in guiding the uh, treatment strategies and also in testing them. We released an app, which is completely free, so I have no conflict of interest, which allows any intensivist, any doctor, any physician to measure the elastances and the coupling in minutes at the bedside just by putting in putting in these simple numbers obtained by echo and blood pressure measurement. And you will be able to measure your patient ventricular arterial coupling and reassess it after treatment. This is very important, as I tried to summarize for you in this short presentation. But all this needs to be put into the context of a comprehensive uh, clinical evaluation. And we very recently um, proposed this approach, which we could, which we call the BEAT approach in the management of shock in the intensive care, where BEAT is the acronym of browse the heart, B stands for browse the heart, so perform an echocardiogram, measure the elastances and ventricular arterial coupling, assess the volume condition, and then, only then treat your patient based on the pathophysiological um, knowledge you will get by going through this process. So I would like to conclude my presentation by saying that the interaction, the interaction between the heart and the circulation strongly affects the PDA. The PDA linearly correlates with the myocardial oxygen consumption. And any change in the contractility in the arterial elastance or both will lead to changes in ventricular arterial coupling and stroke volume, as I showed you. And it is very, this is a strong message from my side. It is very easy and it is possible to do this at the bedside to measure the elastances of the ventricular arterial coupling. And then any treatment addressing the PDA physiology and aiming at improving the coupling might increase the cardiovascular efficiency. But we still need to test whether such an appealing approach based on a strong rationale will have an impact on the outcome in the, in the critical area. Thank you very much.